I'm Teresa. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for joining me here today. Today, something different from me, something that I've done an awful lot actually in my life, but have never shared on YouTube. And that I'm going to show you is how easy and fun it is to try the craft of needle felting. I'm going to show you how to make this cute little Robin um, Christmas ornament, Christmas decoration. He is super easy, whether you've done needle felting before or not. I used to teach a lot of in-person workshops um, where I work. Unfortunately, circumstances um, caused those to, to stop last year. But I taught a lot of needle felting um, classes and they were always sold out. I, I always had to do the project multiple times for different groups of people. And um, one of the most popular ones we did was a little owl. And this is an adaptation of that to create a little Christmas robin. And I thought we're into December now, you know, and I, a couple of years ago, I was doing Christmas craft videos. I haven't had chance to record a whole series of those this year or last year, just have not had the time, unfortunately. But I wanted to get some Christmas um, themed projects on my channel this year, even though there's something that I'm, I'm not normally sharing um, on YouTube. Needle felting is great fun. Um, for those of you that are not familiar with it, you're using unspun wool, and a little needle felting needle which has bobs on the edge of it that as you work the wool with the needle it causes the fibres to mat together and become felt. I've worked him over a polystyrene base and then I've turned him into a, a little ornament by mounting him on a wooden base here, um, created some little Christmas cards that he's delivering and just decorated it so that that can sit on my mantelpiece. I will give a couple of alternatives as to making it easier as I go through. If you don't want to do the, the separate wings and tail, you can make him simpler. If you don't want to put him on the base, you can turn him into a little hanging bauble. Um, but yeah, it's, it's super fun, super easy and not an expensive hobby. If you've not done needle felting before, it doesn't cost a lot of money to get in the products that you need to get started. If you don't have any of the, the little toy eyes that I've used here, you could use beads, you could use um, little circles of felt. But uh, all of these items are pretty easy to come by, pretty inexpensive to buy. And it's a super easy craft. Every time I taught it in person, um, half of the people at the class would be absolute beginners, never done it before, and all were amazed at how easy it was and what great results that you could get. Um, he will only take you a couple of hours to make. Obviously, I've speeded up or edited parts of this video out, but, you know, all my classes I taught, I did within a two hour time period. So if you've just got a morning or an afternoon or an evening free, you can easily make one or more of these. So I'm going to clear him out of the way and I'll be back to show you how he's done. As always, I'll give you a quick rundown of the basics that I'm using today. For the main body of my Robin, I'm going to be using a polystyrene ball. Now you can needle felt just from wool, create um, a ball from the wool itself, but using a polystyrene base for the shape, not only is it cheaper um, because a polystyrene ball costs less than your felting wool, but it makes it a lot quicker. This is a solid you know, base that we've got without having to condense a large amount of wool into quite a firm um, shape for the body. So if it's simple shapes, egg shapes, round circular shapes like this, polystyrene is a really really good um, base product to use. I have my felting needle. Today I'm going to be using this one. This has three needles in the tip and a, and a comfortable grip handle. It makes it just a little bit quicker to work. You can work with a single needle so you can buy single needles like this and a little wooden handle that they fit in. Um, you know, the needle, they all have this little L shape on the end and they just fit in. In this wooden handle here, it has this little bung that goes in, so you could use something like that. You can buy handles that take multiple needles. This one here takes five needles. This is great if you're doing large flat areas. Not so good for sort of smaller shapes. I find either the single needle or something like this with three needles in very close arrangement um, work well for this type of smaller project. I have spare needles. They do have a tendency to break. You know, they are quite brittle, um, so I've always got spare needles on the go. I have a piece of foam here. Now, we work on um, foam. 
if you're doing flat felting you would put foam down as the base so you've got something soft to felt into but I find it's always quite handy just for resting on so sort of to steady the ball rather than me holding it and then I'm more likely to maybe wobble with it and stab myself it just gives me a firm base and then most importantly I have a selection of wool for felting now felting wool is unspun wool so you know wool that is it's come off the sheep, it's been dyed, it's been washed, it's been carded, which basically straightens all the fibres out, but it hasn't been spun into yarn. So I've got a whole selection of sort of neutral colours here, um, shades of brown and cream. Obviously, a little bit of red, because we're doing a robin today. I've got some bright red and a slightly more subdued red, I've decided which one I'm going to use. And I've also got a, a couple of yellow tones here that I'm going to use for a beak possibly feet I'm not sure I might be making wire feet yet um, I think I'm going to use this nice sort of flecked um, quite natural tone as my base and then I'll build up different colors on top but it's super simple even for absolute beginners um, and as I say I've, I've taught needle felting in live workshops I did it for a couple of years and, and sadly unfortunately the where I work, we don't run workshops anymore. So the COVID put an end to all of that. And it, as, as the business has developed, it's unlikely that the workshops will be coming back. But the needle felting workshops are always a sellout, always, um, you know, having to repeat the project for multiple groups of people because people wanted to come and, and learn how to do it. And everybody was amazed at how quick and easy it was to do and what great results that you could get. So today, hopefully, um, if you've never seen this before, you, you might be inspired to have a go and if you've done it before maybe this is just a nice suggestion of, of an easy project for you to create at this time of year so i'm going to get um set up with the other camera angle so you can see what i'm doing and i shall be back to make a start so like i said i want to use some of this uh, nice sort of natural brown it's got a bit of a blend of colors in there and i really quite like that um, for my base so the thing to do is just pull some a section of fibres and we're going to wrap it over the surface of the polystyrene ball like so and we're going to start working with the needles in an up and down stabbing motion which will start to knit the fibres together and help them sort of attach to the surface of the polystyrene. At first you'll think absolutely nothing is happening but persevere keep moving don't overwork in the same place because you'll find that you start to dent the polystyrene and if you keep moving it'll um you won't find that you get a, a strange sort of flat spot or soft spot in the polystyrene Keep your fingers out the way as best of you, as you can. I always used to say this to my students, I said you'll all stab yourself a couple of times and then you'll learn to keep your fingers out of the way. Just sort of pay attention to what you're doing and where you're positioning your hands. And this is where I find having this piece of foam underneath really helps, it helps stop um, the shape from slipping about and that just makes it again a little bit safer for your fingers once you find that it is starting to attach you can take some more wool overlap it we want to cover this entire surface so working one area at a time, just keep repeating this process until you've covered the whole surface. Always try and keep your needles moving at a right angle to the, to the surface that you're working on. If you try and go in at, at a, an odd angle, you're more likely to bend and then possibly snap the needles. They are quite brittle. So I always sort of recommend to try and keep the direction of your needles at a right angle to the surface you're working on. Cheers. 
once you're satisfied that your surface is evenly covered and it's all nicely matted together you haven't got any loose spots you can then start to think about putting some details onto the body and I'm going to begin by putting the robin's red breast on it's a good start um, for then placement of the other features that we're going to be using and I'm still a little undecided I do I think the bright red's a bit too bright so I'm going to use this slightly muted um, red tone here but again in, in a similar way to what we've done with the base coat I want to just get some fibers and I want to do a circle shape so I'm just going to sort of shape it in my fingers to, until it's a sort of a circular shape about the size that I want it to be. I want it to be, it's a nice fat robin so we can have a big red breast. And I'm going to then start attaching it in the way that we've just done, same technique. It's going to hold it in place and working the fibres this layer will then mesh on top of the base layer that we've already put down. So I'm just going to sort of go around the edge so that I get this circular shape that I want. Once I've sort of got my basic outline, I can then work on sort of flattening this down a bit by needle felting over the surface of the shape. Once again keep working that until it's smoothed down and sort of level with the base layer once you feel that it's it's nicely felted there's no loose fibers sticking out there I think we can say his uh, his red breast is done so next I'm going to work on some wings and the wings are going to be sort of like an oval shape that that fit on the side of his body and I'm going to use a slightly different color brown I'm going to use a darker brown I've got a couple of different colors here I'm undecided again always undecided as I'm working on things I think we'll go for this this one I think I think this one's a little dark that one's a little light so we'll go for this sort of medium tone and his back and wings and tail are going to be done in this shade of brown. For the wings you want to make an oval shape and we can either just cover the base um, of the robin, the actual robin body and just have this um, flush with the surface. If you want a bit of dimension and want your wings to look like they, they sort of can flap a bit make them separately and I'll show you how to make them separately but if this looks a little complicated then you just add these directly onto the surface of the robin in the way that we'll do um, the, the back and the top of his head and that, that I will cover that in a moment so to do them separately again chosen a little bit of brown wool I'm going to make it into a bit of an oval shape the shape that I want for my wings I'm just going to pop it down onto my felt um, felting foam here and with the exact same motion as we've done on the body 
I'm going to knit those fibers together. When working on a flat surface like this, you need to keep flipping it over or you'll find it'll start sticking to the surface of the foam. But just keep working it, tucking the ends under till you get the sort of shape that you want. It is quite forgiving. And again, at first you'll feel not a lot's happening, but it'll start to knit together and sort of start to take shape, become a little bit more solid. So once you've made yourself one nice little oval wing that is pretty much, you know, a solid piece of felt at this point, you want to make yourself another one. So you've got two matching pair and just work on them so that they're approximately the same size. You know, they're not exactly, but they're, they're as close as I'm quite impressed. Quite often mine are very mismatched, but I've worked on them today and got two wings that are the same size. And then these, when we attach them, to our little robin they'll be like sticking up at the bottom so that's what we're going to do next so so to take a little look at your robin work out where his shoulders should be and holding the wings in place felt through the top working around the edge to start with there Just to sort of hold it in place because you want them to be as even as possible so get one of them sort of tacked down and then work on getting the other tacked down and we're going to attach them to about the halfway point and leave the bottom half free So again, using that same motion, just using my single needle there for a minute, go back to using me, my um, triple one. And once they're in place, we can work on covering his back. Now, as I said before, I did the wings. If you didn't want to make the wings separately, you would just start covering the back and the sides here with this dark brown but just sort of curving it around so that we're leaving still this area here but I think it's quite nice to have his wings sort of separate it gives him a bit more character but taking more of this brown felt the same color that we've used for the wings I want to fill in a gap I want to leave a little bit here where his face is going to be so working from the sort of center top going to be adding in some of this dark brown and just blending it with where his wings are so it looks almost as though it's one piece So I'm quite happy like that. 
And as I say, if you'd got, if you didn't want to do his wings separately, you would just have felted round in a curved shape here, flush to his body. But I just think it's quite nice just to have that little extra bit there. Now you can leave him like that at the back if you want to, or if you want to pop him a little tail on, you can. I'll show you how to add a tail. Again, in the way that we did the wings. This time though, I think his tail is going to be a bit more of like a wedge shape, almost like a triangle um, with a bit of a flat, flat top to it. It's only going to be small, but again, working just in exactly the same way that we did with the wings, you'll work this little sort of wedge shape or paddle shape. And after you've worked it the same way as you've done the wings, you'll end up with this little, little wedge shape that you can attach on the back. So again, just sit your robin how you think he would be sat so that he, you can get the position right. Just pop him in place like that. And again, we're going to attach the top half, but leave the bottom half sticking out. But say, if you want to leave this out, say, if you want to leave the, the separate wings out, you can do. Save yourself time, save a little effort. But I think it does look nice um, if you do try and get these extra bits in. It just, it just adds more detail. So there's his little tail. Just work it so that it's blended in. If you've got a bit of a harsh join, you always take a little separate uh, bit of wool and just felt that over the join and onto its tail. And that'll disguise it so it'll just look like it's all one piece. The next thing I want to do is pop the eyes on. I want to do that before we put the beak in just so that we get the position right. And his two little eyes are going to go at the top. And for this I'm using toy safety eyes. These are like little amber and black eyes. These ones are nine millimeter in size. Um, Cause I'm using a, I think it's a six centimeter polystyrene ball I'm using here, either a six or an eight. Yeah, but this is a six centimeter ball that I'm using. Now I was torn between using these nine millimeter eyes well, I do have some smaller ones, some seven and a half, but I want him to look quite cute. So I thought I'll use the bigger size. Now I bought mine on Etsy, um, the store that I got them from. If it's still there, it was Sue's Country Creations. But there'll be lots of Etsy stores, Amazon, anywhere. Just look for toy safety eyes. They do come with these like little metal rivets that would fit on the back if you were using them on a soft toy. But we're not um, using, we don't need the backs because we're just literally going to make a hole into the, in the felt and into the polystyrene using a bodkin or something like this or a large needle, pokey tool. Um, make a hole so that we can pop these, the, the shank of the eye in there. Just going to pop a little bit of hot glue in as well. Um, you could use hot glue, you could use a PVA glue, something like that, just so that when you press them in, they'll stay in and they won't slide back out again. So just sort of, again, having a little look, where do you think his eyes should go? And uh, I think I kind of want them there and there. So I've got to work a hole in. I need to make sure my hole goes in enough that I can, far enough that I can push this eye in. Okay, that's where I want my eyes to be. So all I need to do is I'll just take them out, pop a little blob of hot glue on there and push them back in again.
keep working until you've got a nice little uh, beak shape like this. If this is too fiddly for you, if you don't feel confident in doing this, then cut a little piece of felt, some actual felt fabric, uh, a little triangle of felt and attach that, glue that in place. That would look absolutely fine. But we're going to attach this between the eyes, just at the top of this red breast, in the same way that we've attached the other separate pieces. And there's his little beak. At this point you might want to call your little robin done. He's got his wings, he's got his tail. You could attach a hanging loop in the top and make him into a, like a Christmas bauble. Um, easiest way to attach a hanging loop is poke a little hole in the top. Make yourself a, a loop, a hanging loop of ribbon or twine or something and a little bob of hot glue into that hole and, and just poke the end in, of that hanging loop in there. I'm going to mount mine onto um, a little wooden base. So I want to give mine some feet. Uh, best way to make some feet is using wire. Now you want something, you don't want very, very thin wire, maybe a two or three millimeter wire. If you've got silver or black, you can use that. I've got this here, um, which is a craft wire. It's covered in paper, actually. It's actually covered in a brown paper, which I quite like. Have a look in your craft store, look in the Christmas ranges. This is, um, I had this a year or two ago um, and it is the Do Crafts Create Christmas. I think this year it's rebranded under, um, it'll be by West Design, I think, and it's under their Craft Basics um, range. They still do it. It's in a slightly different packaging, but for each foot I've cut a length of wires about six or seven inches. I'm going to fold it in half. That's going to make his center toe. I'm then going to fold it back up and down again on either side to make his three little toes. Just pinching those ends together. Then take the excess and twist it. And that makes his little his foot. And we can we can just curl his toes once we've attached him. So in the way that we attached his eyes, I'm going to poke two holes in the bottom and pop these legs in there attaching with a little bit of hot glue just to make them secure. So I'm going to go basically on this join line between the light and the dark brown. And I'm going to pop them in sort of directly under where his eyes are. I've decided to pop my robin on a base. This is just um, a little slice of wood. And I've put some white texture plates and glitter on the top just so that it sort of looks snowy and a little bit sparkly. And I'm going to fix my little robin on there. Um, and underneath his feet, I'm going to tuck a couple of letters here, little fake letters that I've made. Just made them out of um, some pattern paper bit of washi tape around the edge and doodled on a little stamp and an address. I'm going to have them tucked underneath his feet and I think I'm just going to add a couple of these little pearl balls. These I got from um, a shop called Artful Days, online shop here in the UK. There's quite a few mixed media suppliers that do this type of thing um, but I thought they might just look like little snowballs. I'm just going to hot glue these bits. Um, there's the address www.artfuldays.co.uk and they're the pearl art balls. So we're going to hot glue him on. Just 
just a nice big blob of glue in the middle there to sit him in just like so I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue underneath these letters and then just tuck them underneath his feet there at the front and then either with hot glue or with a little um, gel medium or something like that I'm just going to add a couple of these balls just at the side so again popping a little bit of the glue in and then just pressing some of these balls in place in that glue and there's my little Christmas Robin ornament really really pleased with him ever so cute there's his little tail sticking out the back and he's going to go on the mantel piece of the fireplace downstairs when the rest of the decorations get put out. He's super cute. He'd make a really nice present. Again, hanging decoration. You could stand him on, if you want some height, something like a little vintage uh, or wooden spool. You know, and he would look really, really cute. But I just want him to be nestled among the greenery that we'll have on the top of our fireplace i think he's really sweet so hope you enjoyed this introduction to needle felting if it's something you've not seen before i'd love for you to have a go because it is really fun to do um, any of you that have tried it before as i say hope this is a little inspiration of something that you could make for yourself or for a real fun little christmas stocking fillet for a crafty friend as always if you enjoyed the video please leave me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and hopefully I'll get a couple more seasonal makes in before the end of the year but for now that's all bye